Welcome friends to another Stuff Station One review from my collection of watches and products from a broad price range. Items are showcased for their aesthetics, materials, manufacturing or downright quirkiness. Now today's product that I have in front of you is the Seiko Lord Marvel 5740-8000 or otherwise known as the LM5740 High Beat. Now to me this represents really a true affordable vintage, a product that again for me represents really good bang for your a buck value. Now before high beat movements were introduced the majority of watches operated at a frequency of around 18,000 vibrations of the balance wheel per hour. Now what that means is that the seconds hand uh, would actually only move four to five times per second interval. Okay, now to improve accuracy, watch companies, they were seeking to sort of create movements that really beat uh, or, or beat it at a higher frequency. Now, several Swiss brands set out to develop movements with a doubled rate of around 36 vibrations per hour. And it was uh, Gerard Perigo that succeeded in bringing the first high beat caliber to the market in around 1966. And obviously that beat it around uh, 10 times per second. Now, in 1967, Seiko introduced its own high beat movement, and uh, that's this, uh, the movement that's found within this particular watch. And it's a 23 joule manual wind, okay, so you do have to uh, wind uh, the watch manually. Now, originally, it was actually intended for the Grand or King Seiko watches, but instead, for some reason, um, unknown to sort of most people, Seiko decided to Put the actual high beat caliber inside the uh, Lord Marvel. So this particular watch here. Now, friends, why not subscribe, like, and share? Also, tap that bell icon. I put out content every week, so your support would be really appreciated. Now, the 5740C is really what's known as the, or is actually the precursor to the Caliber 44, and that's found within uh, the Grand and King Seiko chronometers of the time. Uh, the Lord uh, Marvel line, it debuted at um, I think it was around 1959 and the uh, Lord, Mar Lord Marvel 5748000 was manufactured uh, circa between 1967 and 1976 and we can see uh, that this particular one was actually manufactured in 1976. So if we have a look at look there we can see that it says 6 N, N for November and this was the 2,884 uh, 84th piece that came off the production line as it was uh, in November of 1976. Now the watch itself, it, it is a dress watch, okay? And for me, it sort of represents ultimate sort of clean lines, a really understated elegance, and of course, uh, a beautiful and uh, technologically advanced in-house manual wind movement. And we've got to remember that this is fully in-house, okay? So Seiko uh, is one of those brands, uh, you know, along with uh, some Swiss brands that manufactures everything fully in-house. There is nothing that is actually outsourced, and that's what I love about this uh, particular piece and, and, and Seiko in general. Now, at the price, I picked this up for roughly around, I think it was $350, so £250. And I just simply couldn't believe the price that I was getting it for. Um, it's fully in-house and at this price, it's just simply unrivaled. Now, the case itself, it measures um, around 35 uh, millimeters in width, has a, a 41 lug 41 millimeter lug to lug width and has quite an odd uh, lug width uh, or, or the strap spacing of around 19 uh, millimeters. I'm not sure exactly why Seiko chose to go with that size, but at that time they were actually uh, churning out watches with that 
uh, width for the actual straps. Now the case it's itself, now, and this is another thing that I absolutely love about Seiko's, is that the case uh, is in stainless steel and what that really represents is you know, a, a, a material that will really stand the test of time. You have so many vintage pieces, for, you know, going back from the 50s, 60s, 70s that were sort of plated brass and you can see the sort of the chromium plating has come off of the actual case. So um, stainless steel, obviously it resists sort of corrosion and that's fantastic. You know, when you've got a product that, you know, you want to uh, last the sort of the test of time. Now the lugs, they are sort of you know a medium size um, they're not really sort of fat not really sort of too skinny as well at the same same time and they have sort of you know quite nice beveling sort of going on I mean the the bevels on my one are still relatively sharp but what's happened over time is that obviously it has had a light polish so some of them have sort of rounded and uh, smoothed off now the there are you know angled uh, bevels to the actual case and the lugs are very sort of delicate in their aesthetic and I suppose that can be prone to being ruined by polishing. Now as I've said my particular one has had a, a very light polish at some point in its past and um, it's apparent that some of the lugs quite aren't quite as sharp as they once were when they rolled off that sort of production line. Now the aesthetics to me clearly show the DNA behind sort of contemporary Grand Seiko pieces. If you pick up, you know, a Grand Seiko catalog or have a look on the internet, you'll see that, you know, this uh, sort of case flank and these sort of quite sort of slender lugs are very apparent within the actual uh, current Grand Seiko lineup. Now, it does have a... Um, uh, a screw down uh, back and that's really uh, good and it has that standard sort of Seiko horseshoe text arrangement and you know we can see there that uh, it is stainless steel it has the actual movement designation that I mentioned before and that it's water resistant I'm not quite sure as to how water resistant it is now uh, but you know I, I wouldn't actually take it into uh, you know the shower or anything like that now the crown itself is actually quite oversized and it has a really good feel when you sort of pull it out there's no uh, wobble to the uh, play within the crown so that's actually really good to actually feel now the actual dial uh, it has a real understated elegance about it. It's a silver radial brushed finish and we can see that, you know, it just sort of, the, the, the sunburst there really sort of uh, stands out. It has a really elegant applied stick or baton uh, markers in steel with black inlaid lines. Uh, the 12 is different, which is represented uh, by sort of two markers and we have the applied uh, steel Seiko logo below the 12. Now printed just above position six, uh, we can see Lord Marvel there, followed by 36,000, which uh, denotes the vibrations per hour for the actual piece. And directly below that, there's a tiny little S logo. And that S logo represents the stamp for the sewer factory. And there were two factories. There was a Psycho Dini, which made uh, the King Seiko uh, range of watches. And and there was the Seiko, uh, sorry, the Seiko Sua, which produced the Lord Marvels, which is what I have here, and the Grand Seikos. Now, the factory itself was up and running from ar around 1916, 1920, all the way up to 1970. Uh, the actual hands, they're made in steel as well, and they're in that classic sort of dolphin hands uh, style. We have black inlaid lines within the actual hands and a really nice domed acrylic uh, crystal there, surrounded and held in place by a really lovely slim single uh, uh, bezel. And all the elements really come together for me to create a really sleek and classic looking dress watch. And you know, there is such beauty I feel 
to uh, such simplicity and when one considers the price that certain vintage king and grand seikos fetch these days and the you know the beautiful and the technologically sort of advanced movements one might expect that you know that this uh, lord marvel is you know quite pricey but as i said you know these can be found quite easily between the sort of the three to five hundred uh, dollar range and you know if this had the same uh, you know kudos and cachet of the Swiss brands or if it had a Swiss name on that dial then undoubtedly you'll be paying at least you know a thousand to uh, two thousand pounds for uh, acquiring this peach so you know go out there and certainly try uh, hunting for this piece and uh, happy hunting so if you've enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing, liking or having a dialogue by pressing some of the buttons below. So many thanks and goodbye for now.